So I am going to set up the ICOM M710 radio uh, to be programmed with the ICOM 1726 software. Um, a lot of people seem to have difficulties uh, getting that set up. Uh, the software was written decades ago and is meant to run on a DOS computer. Uh, it is not friendly with Windows at all. Um, and it is in some nearly impossible, it seems to get it to work. Um, but I've done it a few times and I've got it uh, pretty well worked out. Um, I'm sitting now on a brand new Dell computer running uh, Windows 10 with all the latest updates. Um, and I am going to set it up now to program my radio. Um, I haven't even started yet. So we're going to walk through and go through every step there is. And uh, any problems that come along the way, you're going to see them and you're going to see me work through them. Um, but I don't think it'll be too difficult because I've, I've done it, have done it a few times. Um, a few things you will need. Um, the first is you're going to need the correct cable. Uh, the correct programming cable is this one. Um, it is not the it is not the remote cable that you use to control the control the radio. Um, I, the one I have is a DB9 on one side, uh, meant to plug into uh, an old an old DOS computer. Uh, there are, I think, some out there that are being sold on eBay that are USB. I have not tested those, and I suspect they will be more difficult to make work. And I'll get into why in a little bit. Um, well, I'll get into why right now. Um, the other thing you're going to need is a USB to serial cable. The one I am using is uh, made by StarTech. Um, what's important is that this uses the FTDI chipset. Um, most of them do not use this chipset. Most of them use a prolific chipset and the prolific chipset will not work. So you need to make sure whatever you buy um, uses the FTDI chipset. Um, let me share my screen here really quickly. Um, so um, let's just go really quick to CDW. And if you search for FTDI, this is what you need. Uh, Trip Light is a decent brand, that's fine. Um, but you need to make sure that it specifically says it's FTDI. Um, if you were to search for a USB to serial, which is what most people would start with, this one will not work. Um, you know, here's the, here's comes up with the StarTech one that I have, that one will work. Um, but if it doesn't specifically say FTDI, um, you can be pretty sure that it is not going to work. So um, anyway, the first step in order to do this, we need to use DOSBox. So we'll just download DOSBox here, the latest version, Windows, uh, Windows installer. Okay, it's done install it, done, done downloading, let's install it. Installs very quickly. Um, and uh, I'll show you, I don't know if it even put a thing on here. There we go, DOS box, it's right there. Um, this is the configuration file, which we need to know. Options. There we go. So okay, so there it is. DOS box. It's uh, running right down here. Um, and it's good. We will need to get into the configuration file. So it put the shortcut right there, and that's good. Um, the next thing we're going to need is the actual software. Um, I've got it already here. 
Um, you can get it off the internet. That's no big deal. It, most people can find the software. They have a hard time getting it to work. So um, let me show you what there is. This is the this A directory. This is where the 1726 software is. Um, and it's in an A directory because it's going to be the A drive on our DOSBox computer. So what I do is I just um, is I just drag this right over to my C drive, copy it there. So DOSBox A, and that's going to be the A drive. Um, so if we come into this DOS box config here and uh, I believe it's at the bottom right here, auto exec. This is just like in the old days, the auto exec dot bat. So we can do echo off um, a drive. Um, oh, we have to mount it somewhere first. Uh, where is that? Is in here? So we have to tell it where the where that drive actually is. Ah, uh, where was that? Oh, mount lines right there. Okay. I don't remember what that is. Okay. Good old Google or Bing in this case, I guess. Toss box mount. Mount drive lit or local directory. Okay. That is simple enough. Mount a C colon backslash DOS box backslash A. Save that. Now let's make sure that works. Um, DOS box, DOS box. There it is. So now we have the, uh, the software available to us. And we can go back to our config file if it's still open. And I was the X, was it 1726 exe slash expert. We want to go into expert mode. I believe it even has to be capital like that, but we'll see. Save and we'll check this again. DOS box, DOS box. Nope. Um, uh, oh, we've got to change directory for us. EX1726. Ah, but if you type it right, it works better. EX. And yeah, seventeen twenty six exe. So CD ex seventeen twenty six. Save. I'll kill these. And Run DOS box again. Perfect. Okay, so now we are in the software. Um, 
and it's not going to work. I don't even have the cable plugged in, um, but the software is running. So the next step is, uh, is this cable. Next step is going to be the StarTech cable. Um, I don't know if Windows comes with the drivers for these. I remember it came with a CD when I bought it about 10 years ago. Um, so we'll plug it in and find out what it does. I don't see it installing drivers down here. Um, Vice manager. Yeah, right here, it's not there. So we're gonna go out onto the internet again, FTDI drivers. Um, I don't even know what model it is. Did it say in here? FT232R. New drive, Windows drivers, installers, drivers, which are. Uh, well, let's try this one. Yeah, we don't need to, and it's not a new thing we're installing, so let's not look for the new ones here. Folder here, extract all, extract. Extract, next, accept, next. There it is. So it sees it now on COM3. So we need to remember that. We go back into options here. And uh, uh, where is COM ports? Zero. There we go. So serial one. Okay. Uh, I think I might have to get on the internet and remember this, but I think that it is a uh, direct serial. And then we would say COM3. Or is it, no, as a real port. Can be disabled, dummy, direct serial, additional person, same one. Uh, for direct serial, real port required. Yeah, okay. Real port COM3. I think that's right. You want direct serial there. That's your real port required. I'll, I could cheat and look at my other computer that works, but I'm, I want to work through it here. Okay, so let's go into DOS box again. Uh, you know what I can, let me, let me, let me take a chance that it's all right. 
I will plug this in here just uh, Oh, there it is. Plugging this into this. This end goes into the back of my radio. And turn my radio on. Wherever the power switch went. It's over here. I have my radio in a really odd place so that I can set this up. Hold on. Okay. Okay, so now my radio is turned on. Um, and if we're lucky, that's all it takes. Uh, where did DOS box go? DOS box, DOS box, loading. Okay, so we hit escape to go into the menu. Um, clone screen. Down here is where we set that we want COM port one. And let's start by doing, uh, this one is the uh, transmitter to the PC, we'll hit enter. And there it is, it's working, receiving stuff. So that didn't, again, I've done this a few times, so I knew the steps to take, but um, brand new computer, Windows 10, basically working right out of the box, just, uh, just doing those setup steps. So uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, I'll do another one in a little bit uh, going over what the settings are. Thank you very much.